If you're struggling with rubber base on short nails, then this one's going to be for you. What's up, nail crew? It's Nicole, your fellow Nail Obsessed DIYer, and today I'm going to do rubber base on super short nails while I'm testing this new Madam Glam, Madam Glam lamp. Oh, that's a that's a mouthful that they sent me. It's been a really long time since I got a new lamp, so when I got the chance to review this lamp, I was really excited. This is a 96-watt lamp, a little bit higher than anything I've normally used, but I made sure it met all the other specifications. It's their Elio Professional lamp that has... 365 to 405 nanometers it has 42 bulbs so everything that i'm looking for reflective bottom and this manny was the one that i'm using it for first i got all my products ready to do my rubber base i got my rubber base out i got the primer the dehydrator cuticle pusher a brush to wipe off any excess gel that gets on my skin and then i like to use a long nail art brush to really get the rubber base into the little nooks and crannies of my nails along my cuticles so that it's nice and close without flooding them then i I put on my Melody Susie gloves. I always wear these gloves. I've tried a bunch of different brands. Oh, they're UV LED gloves to protect my skin from the lamp. And I tried a bunch of different gloves, but most of the other ones I've ripped. So I went and bought like, I don't know, maybe five, six more pairs of the Melody Susie ones in random colors just so that I could have them because I don't know, I always end up being so rough on everything I have. I need gloves too that are going to last really well. You want to start with dehydrating your nails. I had already prepped my nails. I removed my invisible cuticle, pushed them back, and then I'm going in and I apply dehydrator over five nails. I do one hand at a time. Then I go in with my primer and I kind of etch it into my nails, which really means that you rub it into your nails so that it gets in all the little nooks and crannies of your nails because your nails aren't perfectly smooth. They could have like ridges in them. Etching your primer in is going to make sure that it gets into all the little places into your nails and you want to cover your entire nail with the primer. Then I go on with the second layer of primer. This really helps with adhesion. With rubber base, you do not need a gel base underneath it like you do with builder gel. And it's much more flexible than builder gel, but I just go right in with my rubber base and I was running out of rubber base. So I had to like maneuver it a little bit more to get some out. You wanna go in first with your slip layer and your slip layer is the uncured layer that's really thin that you apply first that then allows the rubber base to easily glide down your nail. And I do a slip layer, whether I'm doing rubber base or a builder gel. Now I started doing that I can't remember how long ago I started doing that maybe last year and it really really helps with the application to go so much faster so much smoother and it gets the rubber base and builder gel in all the places that you want much easier so you want to focus on your rubber base bead the bead that you put on after the slip layer you want to focus that in the center of your nail push it back towards your cuticles and drag it mainly along the apex and then float it down onto the sides that's how you're going to start to build your apex and you're not going to flood your cuticles when you're doing that by keeping it along the center and then I go in with a long nail art brush and get it closer to my cuticles that's really been key to go a little bit faster and a little bit smoother because rubber base doesn't self level quite like builder gel builder gel self levels really really easily so I noticed I have to do a little bit more maneuvering with the rubber base and using that long nail art brush to go in to do the detailing along the sides along the cuticles has really helped me. When I have these short of nails, I don't worry a lot about the apex. I just try to do at least a small one. And my nails have a natural apex in, nothing like really big, not a huge C curve or anything. And I just very carefully apply the rubber base bead down the center of my nail and then float it to the sides. I always like to make sure that I wipe off the sides of my nails, either with acetone or isopropyl alcohol to make sure that there is no gel on my skin especially when your nails are this short it's going to be much easier i found to get excess gel on your skin so you never ever want to cure any of it on your skin if you cure gel on your skin you're risking gel allergies and i don't know about you guys but i definitely don't want to give up my gel products if i don't have to so i'm going to be really really careful i prefer to use acetone on my skin, but I had a reaction to acetone. I found out I was allergic. It just happened. I believe it was in the fall or maybe, I don't know. I don't, time's going so fast. I can't, I can't keep track of anything, but I can't use acetone anymore. 
So I've been using ice purple alcohol just to make sure my sides are really clean. And I was using this nail polish remover that also worked for gels, but it made my products lift. And so I don't use it anymore, unfortunately. I only use it if I'm stamping or applying a decal to melt the decals into my nails. That's the only way that it's not gonna make the product lift for me since I already use peel base on my dip mayonnaise. Unfortunately, I have to just stick with ice purple alcohol, but it still works. And I do the same process for each nail that I apply the slip layer all the way over my nail, a really thin layer, then get a bead of rubber base, bounce it back towards my cuticles, and then float it down, focusing mainly on the apex, and then glide it down to the sides near my cuticles. After each nail is done, after I feel like the rubber base is in the right place that I want it, then I flash cure my nail for five to 10 seconds because you don't want that rubber base to move. I do this no matter what gel products I'm using. Using, I flash cure for five to ten seconds in between each nail this way my products don't move so even if I'm applying gel polish I do the same thing I flash cure five ten seconds so nothing moves and this rubber base luckily is very forgiving color that if you don't apply it perfectly because it has a little bit of shimmer in it it's a very consistent color with the shimmer it just applies so much nicer I found and gives you an even coverage even if you're struggling a little bit with the application when I'm using my long nail art brush to get close to the sides and back towards my cuticles. I also like to take the rubber base that's at the tip of my nail and float it back towards the center so it stays along the apex and doesn't give me really thick ends of my nail. That's something that you definitely don't want. You don't want your nail ends to be super thick that then when you apply the next product over it, whether it's gel or dip powders, especially if it's dip powders, then you're going to end up with really thick nails on the tips. And to me, that's just not the look that I'm going for. And as your nails grow out longer, you definitely don't want the tips to be thicker because you're not gonna have a balanced apex and your nails could be more likely to break. So floating that rubber base back towards the middle of your nail, giving it an apex is going to give you a proper placement. And then once I finish getting the placement of all of my rubber base to the right spots, I fully cure all five nails for 60 seconds. You wanna cure your rubber base or whatever gel product you're doing based on the specifications of whatever the product is so like some cure for 30 seconds some cure for 90 seconds some cure for 60 seconds i always cure my thumb separately because i tend to have my thumb at a weird angle and that's something that a lot of people do so i've seen nail techs recommend to cure your thumb separately so that's what i do now and it really really works to make sure that your thumb is fully cured once all five of your nails are cured then you can spray them with ice purple alcohol wipe them off with a paper towel or lint free wipe and then you can go in with a buffing block and make sure your nails are nice and smooth if you have any parts that are too thick, then you can just gently file those down, fix up your shaping with a hand file before you're gonna go in with your gel base and gel top. Or you can go right in with gel polish after you fix up your shaping, or you can go in with your gel base and gel top and dip powders. Now, if you're still struggling with your rubber base application and you need some more help, then make sure you check out this next video where we'll talk about how to apply a rubber base overlay on your natural nails. Thanks so much for joining me today, Nail Crew.